She didn't have an engine until 1922, and then she had a 19 horsepower engine. Meet David and Penny and a classic top sail schooner Ria of Nieborg, which was built late 1800s to transport stone. Together, they have saved Ria from being scrapped after sinking, and have been living on board Ria for the past 34 years, chartering around the Mediterranean. Come and have a look at all the unique features and stories of this boat and couple. Welcome to Boat Life is Best. Here you'll find interviews with sailors about their boats and their life on board. Ranging from family sailing to solo sailing, from absolute beginners to sailing legends, on big yachts and small boats, and from brand new to old school. If you like boat tours and conversations with sailors, definitely subscribe to the channel. Well, we've owned the boat since uh, 1989, and uh, when we discovered her, um, in a very neglected state in, in Turkey and we, uh, we rescued her, did her up and uh, got, got her ready for the charters uh, in eight months after we found her. We uh, took her over, she was catch rig. Mm -hmm. yeah. She'd been changed from a schooner to a catch. Oh wow. So her mast was here yeah. and, and she's got a duck stern so and, and it was mounted on uh, like a four-legged table over the gearbox down down below yeah. and um, it it so, didn't really suit the boat so eventually David said I, oh, I, I went back to I went to see how she was originally I went back to Niebuhr and to Copenhagen got her original papers because originally she was called Kirstein and she was built to take the stone to the sea walls in the Baltic. Wow. And uh, she didn't have an engine until 1922, and then she had a 19 horsepower engine, which I presume was just to help her get in that <laughs> port. Yeah. And uh, then in 1934, she had another engine and changed names again. She she went from uh, Juliet Kirstein to to a um, hand. No, was it Martha or Anne? No, she went to Anne and then Martha and then Julianne von Holt and then she became Rhea at some time, we probably don't know, 60s maybe, mm. 70s. But when we took her over she was Rhea and we've kept her as Rhea ever since. And uh, um, we, we've... Um, and the paperwork just said she was a schooner, so we didn't know if she was a four and a half yes. schooner mm. or with square sails. Mm. David decided it'd be much more interesting with square sail because they're all smaller. It, it all made sense. The jibs mm. were smaller uh, and and did were easier to handle. We the square sails were smaller, easier yep. to handle. And only when we went to look for where we had to put bolts through the deck for for some of the things did we find down below that the book. The, the holes for the bolts were already there mm. in the beams, so she had been square rigged before. So we square put her back yeah. to being a top sales yeah. yeah. which she was on the original papers anyway. Yeah. And just didn't say wow. yeah. And, and Penny uh, made a set of, two sets of sails for her. One when she was a catch, mm -hmm. and then when I went to uh, Niebuhr in 96, um, discovered and put, we put her back to her original, uh, we had to make another set of sails and these are made of Duradon and have been very durable. <laughs> very cool, yeah. And do you know when the boat was built originally? Yeah, or? But, well, late 1800s. Late 1800s. Well, oh. registered, first of all, 18th of June, 1900. Wow. That's on the papers. That's on the papers where yeah. it was first and registered. she was yeah. built to carry rock and stone, so she was doubled skin, mm -hmm. oak on, oak on. Of sort of six, seven centimeters of oak on the outside, the same on the inside, and 13 by 13 ribs all the way yeah, along. So, wow. So, so some of the planks near the gunwales are actually 10 centimeters yeah. thick. So it's really made to carry a lot of loads yeah. and yeah. built yeah. very and, strong. Uh, yeah. yeah, and some of the planks were 12 meters long. Wow. <laughs> so it must yeah. be made in a pit with <laughs> a saw. You were hand saw, absolutely yep. incredible. The skill, absolutely incredible. The skill yeah. to cut those planks yeah. and then to steam them and bend them around because yeah. it's yeah. oak so heavy. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable. We've had to replace quite a lot of the um, quite, quite a lot of the outer skin, but the majority of the inner skin is exactly as it was, and the ribs below the waterline were very very solid. Some of the ribs above the waterline we have replaced, but uh, we do all that work when we take her out of water in Turkey, which we do every every so often. Yep. It's been every year for many years, but the last 
we didn't take her out last winter. She was re-caught for winter before and she's in a very, very strong and solid state. One thing we ought to add that when we took it over, we'd stripped the whole boat completely. It was just a bare hull and no cabins, nothing. We took everything out because... because she'd been sunk up to above deck level. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. But apart from that, the, the, the accommodation below decks was very minimal. The aft cabin is, relatively speaking, as it was originally, but the rest of the boat has been completely uh, rebuilt inside. Yeah. So to accommodate up to up to 12 guests mm -hmm. in, in uh, double cabins. So, wow, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So anyway, yes. But yeah, so. Let's show you around. So this is one our one cheat, very old, but still very effective hydraulic windlass. They, they had, they'd have had a big hand one, but that we keep putting the anchor up and down. It's just not practical. Everything else is still, the same sort of things. We've got about 90 something blocks and pulleys around in the rigging. So we've got the flying jib, outer jib, inner jib, four stay sail. We have two top sails, square sails up there. One is missing, it's just being repaired. Upper top, lower top. And then we have um, a course, which is another big square sail that we can pull up from on deck. And then in the middle, we've got a little top, top stay sail that goes up and down between the two masts. We have a main top and a main. We have 11 sails altogether. 11 sails on the boat when you're yeah. fully rigged, yeah. wow. And you sailed by the two of you, that's possible? Or are yeah, you? Yes, yes. Yeah? Well, uh, it, it's uh, possible to take quite a long time to get the sails up. Yeah. And, we uh, haven't done that for a long time. <laughs> we have done, yeah. had all the sails up between the two of us at one time, but to, to sail it properly, you need uh, you need a good crew man. Mm -hmm. So three of us can sail it well. No yeah, problem. yeah, really easy to handle. So mm. you can pop those yeah. things like that up. Yeah. You can pop up a few more sails easily. And um, you, you do you have to climb all the way up to like do the square sails, or no, we've cheated. you can do it from here. Did, did you see the Dutch program Seven Seas? I don't think I've seen it, no. no. Uh, well, we did seven programs for Greenpeace. Really? Dutch oh, wow. I'm definitely going to look into that. I'm going to put the link for that yeah. one in the description as well. Yeah. yeah. The, no, the, uh, on bigger tall ships, they had things called bunt lines, which are lines that come up from deck over the, the yard, down to the bottom of the sail at the front, and they, you can pull them from on deck and pucker them up. Mm -hmm. Smaller ships like this didn't always have them. But because we're opening and closing sails so much, we've got bunt lines, so we can we can pull them up like a curtain, and uh, Work from and the then if it's really windy, go and tie them up. Yeah. And the interesting thing about the top sails is is the upper top is on a yard, and the whole yard gets pulled up mm. and opens out upwards. The lower top, you let the clues down, and that drops down uh, downwards. So. Yeah, but they're really manoeuvrable, really useful for backing to tack through the wind. Yeah. Um, just lots of things to fiddle with, so it Ooh. makes it really interesting. We've raced the boat on several occasions in, mm. in Turkey for the Bodrum Cup. And yeah. uh, um, we've got some very nice photographs of Rhea in, in that race. Actually. Yeah, I can believe that. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. And then when we've opened the little top stay right up on top between the up the top of the upper top and the bottom of the, the, uh, of the main top and the b bottom of the fore top. That's a, just a little triangle up there. We've opened it racing and it actually slows us down. It slows it you down. It must upset the, the flow of air to mm. the big main top at the back. So we just assume it was used in port to, to open up and maybe catch some wind above mm. the buildings to shift her around. Yeah. Yeah, especially moving around this boat before it had an engine that must have been yeah, yeah. very highly skilled and yeah. probably a little bit impractical as well uh, yeah so, uh, well in those days they just had to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah because it's a steep staircase i'll, I'll let you go down with <laughs> oh wow going in we've got a, a port cabin and a starboard cabin they're sort of mirror images of each other all the cabins have uh, loos and showers. The shower just pulls out the basin there. And these two, they can either be a single or they've got a pullman to be two singles, 
or the whole bed can slide out a bit more to be like a snuggle double so plenty of variety yeah there's we've got air conditioning in this forward area mm, that's a luxury yeah and then in here there's certainly not room for dancing it's more <laughs> like a conventional sailing boat the very little space for moving around so a double and a little blue and shower in here which is waiting for a complete refurb it's a bit of an embarrassment mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, so and again that's that's got a, a pullman that can come down for single people. I really love all the woodwork that's like everywhere, it's so much character to the boat. Yeah. Well when we when when we recommissioned her, we put in an extra um cosmetic layer of pine on the inside. So the the oak inner skin is behind that and then the ribs and the outer skin. So this is this is all the, the pine around there is cosmetic, but these are original oak ribs. And um, then we've got little bits of mahogany and mm -hmm. stuff no knocking around. Wow. Uh, so then the saloon. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so now we're in the, the now large saloon. Oh, yeah, wow. the saloon. The, the, the bottom of the, of the hull is actually not far below the floor here. There's a steel girder that goes right the way along mm -hmm. underneath this and uh, so it <coughs> it's um, it's a massive uh, massive piece of um, um, equipment amazing so strong. That's amazing. When we got her she had um, a lot of pig iron and, and ballast inside the boat uh, but we wanted to use the space so David uh, arranged to have a sort of box section, uh, is it about 70 centimetres or so, steel, yeah. and put all the pig, pig iron inside, well, on the in. outside, down on un, underneath, so hopefully so to make her sail better. As well, right away. Mm. Yeah, for stability. So then we've got tanks under here, this, this higher level is all tanks. There's two crew cabins with double beds and loos and showers in there, which are in a, Chaotic state. <laughs> Chaotic state it's at the moment. They're crew cabins. Yes, they have to be. Yeah. They have to be. So, and then we've got the galley. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, just a little seating area here. Yeah. The galley. And we have a, a deep freeze that we actually use more for cold drinks because it'll, mm. when we run the generator, it chills everything down really, really mm -hmm. quickly. Mm. And an ordinary fridge, just mm. domestic cooker. Yeah. We've got fiddle rails we can put on it if it's rough, but. Mm. Most of the time for us, we don't need it. Washing machine and yeah, the engine, the engine room that seriously needs painting. It does <laughs> need painting. Mm -hmm. It re really needs oh, painting. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is even a light in there? It's an embarrassment. We normally keep the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big engine. It's a man 240 and um, Five cylinder, six, cylinder. six cylinder, 240 man. It was originally a bus or lorry engine and then marinized. And that, that's the other engine, of course, is the generator. The generator is yep. a single, a single, cylinder, single cylinder. Single cylinder. Oh, that must make a cool sound though when it's running. Like yeah, it's very calm. Yeah, yeah, very calm, yeah. Incredible because the boat is so well insulated. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it's not noisy really on deck. It's not noisy at all. You just feel it when it when it's, it's probably like all the wood is like natural down. isolation from the sound. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, and of course, the whole engine room is completely insulated mm -hmm. uh, with. Uh, uh, with steel on top of it. So this is like your main living area or do the guests stay here as well? Sometimes? Yeah, I mean, so, if yeah. the weather's bad, the guests come down and, and eat yeah. down here and we've, things. We've had yep. 14 people around this day. Mm, wow. Yeah. But yeah. otherwise, yeah, no, I mean, um, it means that the, the, the guests can be in their cabins and we can be preparing breakfast or whatever yep. else and they don't, don't really yeah. hear us, which is nice. And we can sneak away and, or and, whatever. And, and the main main guest cabin, which of course we're living in at the moment, yeah. because we haven't got guests, is the aft cabin, which you're going yeah, to see now. And about the, 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 well, the nice drawings or the, the paintings here of the other boats? Oh yes, these my grandfather brought back from Singapore in, uh, well they must be well over a hundred years old. Uh, they're right, built on rice paper. Painted on and rice paper. Pa uh, yes, painted on rice paper. And <coughs> The, the picture of a dog. Yep. We had our Springer Spaniel on board for 17 years till he died two years ago. And oh, he was yeah. known as Sam the Sea Dog. And 
I, I've got a video of him actually climbing that swimming ladder. He was uh, so much part of, and and if you have a look at the Seven Seas, yeah, definitely, he's yeah. very much featured in the film. Oh wow, Seven that's Seas. cool! Yeah, <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. You must have had a good life, Sam. Oh, yeah. he's <laughs> had a great wonderful life. life, and he's a wonderful dog. Wonderful dog, wonderful life. Yeah. Wow. Really miss him. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about the rig. So you have like yeah. two main masts. Yeah. Uh, well, this is like a gaff rig or this one? Top, or? top sail schooner. Uh, that's uh, official, um, uh, official rigging. And uh, obviously four and a half rigged. It's called four and a half rigged but with the square sails. So, um, so she's top sail, top sail schooner. And we um, we love to sail her whenever we have people who want to sail her, but uh, it um, just depends on uh, who we've got on board and um, for day trips uh, we often use the square sails because yep. they're very, very um, easy to use from the point of view of guests can still keep the shade and they can sail yep. so, and, and they love doing that, so we do that quite a lot. And, uh, um, obviously she sails best on, uh, on a reach like any other boat <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but when you've got all the sails up and she sails uh, you know, 8, 9 knots uh, maximum uh, well we've had 11 knots once in the race so the whole boat's <laughs> 11 knots on this boat wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that was something else but normally, uh, normally eight eight knots, very very um, normal. And uh, uh, under power, she cruises at seven knots, and uh, we, you know, obviously max of eight or eight or nine. Uh, but we um, never try to push the boat more than about fifteen hundred revs. Uh, yep. We've got a big propeller, and uh, it's very very quiet, calm, lovely, lovely movement. The boat has superb movement. Uh, well, yeah, I think thank you for showing me around and it's like telling me about this incredible yeah. boat. <laughs> and uh, well, we hope to yeah. have you on board again. again. Yeah, definitely. So if people want to join you on your sailing adventure, so that you do day trips from Paxos, yeah. but there's also like more longer trips you want to do maybe. Yeah, we love doing weekly charters or, or a day trip from here yeah. yeah can people do also like a private booking so if they have like 10 friends or 12 friends and they can do like a, a week or two week uh, oh yeah booking? absolutely yeah. we've done many many week two weeks in fact we did a film charter as i said which which was three weeks starting in italy and ending in in cagliari in sardinia mm -hmm. and uh, uh we, we've done a, a trip from xanthos a month's trip from xanthos to venice Mm, wow. right way through Croatia and that, that was a great chart and, and, and especially ending up in Venice <laughs> yeah quite amazing oh. ending up in Venice with this boat that must have been a very cool view yeah, yeah. Quite interesting. very cool how can I uh, reach out to you like uh, where where can I find the people find you to um, well through uh, um, our website and uh, which is uh, topsail-charters.com yeah and uh, obviously, through mo most uh, international agents, rears listed as well. Yeah. But uh, we're also on Paxos Grapevine, and we're um, yeah, we're, we're um, fairly easy to find on on, on, the, on the web. Yeah. If, if you look up rear rears listed, and the, that's cool. Uh, if yeah. Google rear of Nebo, you'll, you'll find rear. No, no Thank you. Yeah. So. Are you ready for a unique classic sailing adventure? Experience Ria in real life and connect with David and Penny via the links in the subscription to book your charter for next summer and really find out that boat life is best. <laughs>